Hello everyone. So in the previous video, we saw that how to create an AI clone voice using a pre-trained model. So in this video, we will see that how we can create our own model to replicate someone voice. Especially in this video, we will see that how we can replicate Neil Tyson voice. I hope that you all know this person, Neil Tyson. He is an astrophysicist. I'm a great fan of him and I'm a fan of his voice because he got some manly voice also. Okay, let's train a model to train his voice and at the end, let me clone my voice into his voice and let's see how it sounds. Okay, since we are going to train uh, Neil Tyson's voice, so first we need a voice file of his. We need a sample voice of Neil Tyson. So using that voice, we can train our model and at last we can replicate using that model. So first what we need is we need a database of this person voice. So for that, always remember three things. When you are downloading someone voice, always remember three things. The first thing is always try to find person speech don't download some songs of that person or something always try to find a person speech because that will give you a better result the second thing is when you are downloading that person speech always try to find a clear audio don't try to find when he is speaking in when he's giving some public speech where there is a lot of noise or some background music yes we can use some software and we can remove that noise and uh, music and all but when we are using that kind of software, it will little change his original voice because when you are using that software, it will change his voice, right? So the output will not be that much accurate. So always try to find a clear audio of that person. The third is like try to find a, either longer audio or try to find different, uh, many different audios because we want an audio for a sample in which he is using different kinds of words. Like we want to know that how he pronounce different kinds of words, different kinds of syllables. So always try to find uh, these three things. Try to find a uh, speech of that person and that speech need to be clear and we need to find a longer audio or many audios. So and when you are finding a clear audio, I will give one more hint is that don't directly go for YouTube to find because in YouTube most of the time it will have some background noise or it will have some mixed music because always the content creator who is posting that he will mix with some music or some some noises will be there. So always go for some official sites or sound clouds to get a better audio. So keeping this in mind, let's go and find Neil Tyson's audio sample for our model training. So let me maybe put each MP3. Okay, see this seems like some official site because it's English speech channel. So this seems like some official sites, right? So let's go for it. Okay, let me play this one. of clarifications uh, before I go out North America. What drives people to enter in Florida? But I had 1960, a cosmic life magazine and college politics. All of that matters. See, this audio seems like very clear. This is like very clear audio. Even though it is having some music in the front and in the end, it's totally fine because we will use some softwares and we can just crop out this uh, two part and we'll use only the main part but the thing is like this audio is very clear and the second thing is his audio is long enough which means he may use like different kinds of word like different kinds of pronunciation so that our model will uh, train properly and give accurate result okay let's download this audio it's already contained like mp3 download if it does not have like mp3 download then you need to find then there are many uh, sites that you can use like you can use safe from net site or ss youtube site like you can use there are many sites to download um, audio or video and this site it's already contained mp3 so i'm just simply downloading it so let's download mp3 Yes, I already created a folder called database. I am just storing it there. Yes, done. Okay, now we have downloaded the audio. But as I said before, this audio, the first part and last part, it contains some uh, music and also it contains some clapping part, right? So we need to crop it out. So for that, I'm using Audacity, soft Audacity software. If you want, you can use any software and you can remove. But I use this one because later we will do kind of splitting the audio that also can be done in Audacity software. So if you want, you can just download and install the software and you can also use the same software. Audacity, I'm just using this software, just opening it. And let me drag and drop this audio here. 
Okay, so here, see if I play this one. For that, For that warm, warm see, until until here, there is like some music and clapping sound. So I want to uh, crop that one. So I'm just using the select option. I'm just cropping. I can just crop more. Also, no issue. Then I'm right click and split. So after splitting, I'm just uh, deleting this one. Okay, done. So like that. At the end, also there is some clapping. I, 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 I think it's happened here to lean escorts again. Thank you. Okay. So let me take the select and crop it up. Split and delete i just need to use that one delete yes so now my audio contain only the speaking part without any clapping or any external music background noise nothing so only a clear part but now i need to consider one thing that okay now i have around 16 and a half minute of audio if my audio contain like different pronunciation of words like he is speaking different words and different uh, vocal sound and different syllable if i'm very sure that he is using all kind of different pronunciation then I can keep this 16 minute audio as a single audio. But if I'm not sure that whether he is using different kinds of word or not, because I cannot sit in here all the 16 and a half minutes and I cannot uh, note down that whether he is using different pronunciation of yes, you have like different sounds, is there not vowel sound and consonant sound that how he is using all these things. If you are sure, you can just keep the 16 minutes. If you are not sure, then we need to split this 16 and a half minutes audio into smaller part. Maybe we can divide this 16 and a half minutes audio into one one minute audio and we can make it as a 16 or 17 audio. So like that we need to split. If you are not sure that whether he is using like different pronunciation of words, then it is always better to uh, cut the video into smaller part which will increase the accuracy. The second thing is when you are just splitting the audio into smaller part, then it will little fasten the speed of the training process. So always I will recommend that you can uh, crop the audio into smaller part. So let's see how we can crop the audio into smaller part. So for that we can use the uh, same uh, Audacity to do that. Just click this uh, audio which you want to split and go to analyze here and find for label sounds. Okay, here you need to set up two things. One is the minimum silence duration and minimum label duration. Just keep the minimum silence duration as the uh, 10 milliseconds which means that it will just uh, split wherever there is a 10 millisecond gap which means almost everywhere it will just split and we need to keep like how much is the minimum uh, duration of a splitted audio that we want so we want at least one minute audio because i am just dividing the 16 and a half minute audio into one one minute right so just i am keeping one minute so you can use this software or you can use any software and just split it into like 16 part or 10 parts like it's up to you. So if you want to use Audacity, just keep 10 milliseconds and keep the minute of the audio you want. Uh, ideally, you can just keep one minute. Then give apply. Once you give, set apply, see now it is just divide this audio into smaller part of yeah, 17 because 16 minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah. So now what I need to do is I just need to click file and export export multiple yeah then it will ask that where i need to store so i'm just choosing the directory in the folder i you see we have database so in this database let's create a new um, folder name Il So I'm just storing it here and we need to uh, press label because we are just splitting according to the labels and yeah, nothing else. No need to change anything. Just give export. So it is just a, it is just splitting and uh, dividing the audio into 16 part and it is storing one by one. So if we go here, okay, now it's done. If we go here and see there is a folder and in the, inside that folder, see there are 17 files. If I just open one one audio file and i can see uh, before i agreed to accept that to see it is just a yeah, one minute audio clip so like that it just divided this audio into 17. okay now we can use this data set and we can train our model okay. okay now we have a data set for training this model 
Okay, let's see that how we can train the model. Okay, now we can train the data set in two ways. One, we can train the data set locally in our own system, own laptop, or we can train the data set online. So in this video, we will see how we can train a model in online. And the next video, we will see even how we can train the model in offline with the minimum uh, GPU that we have. So for that, first we need to go to uh, this link. I will give the link in the description also. So once you gone here, you can see this kind of okay okay so once you come here you can see this kind of uh format here so all these things are the coding you can just directly run over here but for the safety purpose what i will suggest is you can just click here and save a copy in google drive so that the coding copy will save in your google drive because now it is available in my drive right so if i uh, unfortunately if i delete in the future or if it went missing or if it went moved then this link will not work anymore so for the safety purpose you just make a copy of uh, this one and uh, save it in your drive so that you can use this coding in future okay so okay for now training the model first thing what we need to do is we need to connect uh, this kernel so further just click the reconnect and it will start to connect so it will just say connecting and it will just connect it so here you can see there is a virtual ram and disk so we are using google scholab gpu and disk so we no need to have any gpu of our own so we are using google scholab gpu and disk for our process okay now just come here and here it says install to google drive just click that run button it will ask to connect to google drive just click connect to google drive and give your google drive account and just click allow okay okay what this piece of code is doing is actually this piece of code is uh, making a folder inside your uh, google uh, drive and you it, it will it will contain all the necessary things about this training and uh, all this process so that we can train and we can store our model index file everything in your google drive so basically what this piece of code is doing is it is just simply connecting to your google drive and it is installing the basic necessary basic necessary things to train a model now the installation to google drive process is over so once it is over successfully then it will show a success note here which means that this code ran successfully so what this piece of code did is actually uh, this is a folder where it contain all your google drive files and folders see all these things are my files and folders of my google drive like if i go to my google drive and check see i can see all these files right and it shows the same so it connect to my google drive and after connecting to my google drive one more thing it did is like it created a new folder called project main see if i go here and i can see there is a new folder called project main so it contain all the files and folders to run this rvc so that we can train our model so it contain all the necessary coding and everything okay so even after training we like all our model and index file everything will be stored here and we need to take out from here so that is the thing that this first part did okay now we come to the second part that is a pre-processing data so here the first thing we need to give is we need to give a model name so i can give any name i want since i am training neil tyson's uh, model so i'm just keeping neil model you can keep any name you want but uh, don't give any space or something just give as a single uh, word the next one it is asking is the data set folder actually we have the data set here right so the data set that we have here is a, it it's stored in my laptop it's stored in locally but now i need to give uh, the online path of this so what i can do is i can just upload it here and after uploading it here i can just give the path of this one so to upload first create a folder let's create a new folder and keep any name you want i'm just keeping neil tyson because uh, in google collab you cannot upload a whole folder you can just upload file by file so i'm just creating a folder here and i'm just giving upload and i'm going to my database that which we created or we see data set i'm just con i'm just pressing ctrl a and open okay now it is uploading all the sound files uh, of our data our data set okay now our data set is ready we just upload a neil tyson right if i just go inside inside that folder and i can see all the sound files that we uploaded here and remember one thing that when you are keeping a folder name keep the folder name uh, as a single word don't give space or something okay so just keep as a single word okay now what we need to do is we need to give the path of this folder to here so for that just go click this three dot and click copy path and paste it here 
So that's done. We just kept the model name and we gave the dataset folder path also. Just run it. So now it will start to pre-process your data. So if you are giving some space here, like if you created a, a folder name with space or something, then it will show here. It will show that it can't find your data set or something. So remember to keep as a single word. See now this also is success. This was success, which means this ran successfully. Now we come to the future extraction part. In future extraction part, there are like four algorithms we can choose. Since we are using like online platform, so we just take GPU because Google is giving free GPU. That for that sake only we are using this online platform, right? So no need to change anything. Just keep as GPU and run it. So this will do some the uh, future extraction part uh, for your model. Okay, now the future extraction part also is over and I got a success sign. If if there is no success and if it is showing some error, then you can just uh, put it in the command and I will say how to solve. But 99% it will work without any problem. If you just follow the same step, that's why I'm just going very slowly step by step. So just follow like exactly the same, then it will not show any error at all. Okay, so now the future extraction is over. Now we need to train index. Here we don't need to change anything, just run it. Actually, what this code is doing is like it is creating the index file. Actually, in last video, we saw that when we are going to clone a voice, we need two things, right? We need a model file and we need an index file. So this one will create an index file uh, for your uh, model. Okay, now this is also is done. It will not take. It will just take only thirty seconds to run. So now it created an index file. So if you go to your uh, project main that drive, and if you go inside your logs. See the same name that the model name I kept it in the same name there will be one folder will be created. If I just go inside, I can see there is an index file. Okay. So there are two index files. We'll we'll see that which one we need to choose that we'll see later. Okay. So this created an index file. So now we need to train a model. We need to create a model file. So for that, we need to fill all these things. First is it is asking about token. It is asking about auth token. Actually, what is this uh, authentication token is for TensorBoard. Okay, actually, what TensorBoard will do is actually TensorBoard will give a dynamic workflow of our model. Like when our model is training, so we can see dynamically, we can visualize and see like how it is training, how much accuracy it is getting, whether it is training properly, like whether it is uh, getting close to our real voice or not to see it accurately in visualized way so we can use tensorboard so to connect there what we have to do is first we need to click this one we need an authentication right so for that click that link and click it again so now we need to create an account so we can create using our uh, google account so i am just logging with google and i am using my google account okay so now we can just accept the terms and condition and create an account So it is asking for multi-factor authentication. Just skip it and click got it. Okay, now it is asking what is my purpose of using this. You can just say that developer building for fun. And you can say it is my device and my own network. And it is for myself. And yeah, click continue. And here you can see there is like your auth token. There you can see a link, right? So this is the link that they are asking there. So we just need to copy it here. And we need to just paste it here. Yeah, paste it over here. Okay, now here it is asking for model name. So we need to give the exactly the same name that we gave in pre-processing data. So just copy that and paste it over here. Yeah, that's all. Okay, now here we can see there are two things. One is save frequency and another one is epochs. Epochs is nothing but how many number of times you want to train the model. Like the more number of times you are training the model, then the output will be more accurate. So if you, the more you are increasing here, then the more accurate your output, the more uh, clear your output voice will be. But the thing is, the more number of times you are increasing the epochs, the, the time taken also will get increased. So for ideal condition, you just keep around 250 to 300, then it will give yeah, ideal output. But if you want more clear output, you can just increase until thousand. It's available here. You can just keep maximum of thousand. So here, just it is a tutorial video. I'm just keeping two fifty. Okay. Now the save frequency. Save frequency is nothing but like how often you want to store your model. Okay. I am just uh, running two fifty times and save frequency. I kept fifty, which means for every fifty epochs, for every fifty times it will store my model so 250 means it will store 50 100 
150, 200, 250. So it will store my train model five times. You see, there are many reasons that why we are uh, saving this uh, model. Like one of the reason is like, okay, I am just running uh, 250 epochs. When it is uh, training around 220 or 230, around that time, if because of some network issue or something, if it got disconnected, then the whole process will get uh, spoiled, right? I need to train it again from the beginning. So this, uh, when I'm just using the save frequency, it will just save 50, 100, 150, 200, right? So even if it got disconnected around 220, still I can use my 200 uh, epoch train model because already it will be stored so there are many reasons we are using like why we are doing this one of the reason is this one so you, you can just keep save frequency according to that if you are just training for longer time then always keep maximum of 50 because it will it will just store train model right so it will occupy space also so i recommend you to keep around 50 as the maximum you can just keep from minimum 5 to 50 okay then here then here it asks for catch, always uncheck catch. Like if your data set consists of 10 minutes, less than 10 minutes audio, then you can just catch it. If it is more than 10 minutes long, then uncatch it. Otherwise your CPU will get, CPU memory will get filled. So our audio is around 17 minutes. So I just uncheck it. So now it's done. We can just start training. Okay, see now you can see that it started to train like it is like starting with one epoch and he can, here you can see the time when it start like when it happened and this is the time taken. It says it take 45 seconds to run one epoch which means just to train one time it is taking 45 seconds. Since for second epoch it is taking 30 seconds. So like that it is it is going to run uh, 250 epochs. Okay, just for an average if you are taking that it is taking 30 seconds to run an epoch so let's calculate if we just use calculator it is using 30 seconds to run one epoch we are training 250 epochs which means it will take uh, 7500 seconds we just divide it by 60 so that we know minutes it will take 125 minutes which means it will take around 2 hours it will take around uh, 2.08 hours it, it will take around 2 hours 10 minutes so we have to wait until 2 hours 10 minutes to get the result here if you see that already my 250 uh, epochs already it, it got over it took around one and a half hour uh, because uh, yeah it took around one and a half hour to finish so already it's over so now let's see that where we need to find the index and uh, model file so he, now you go to the drive and in the drive like you are just going to this project main right like in we are just going to drive and here this project main so inside this project main there is a folder called logs so just go inside the logs and like we kept the model name as Neil's uh, Neil model right so if you are creating two or three models then everything will have a folder now we are just created Neil model so I'm just clicking that and inside here you can see there are two index files one is added and uh, Neil model index and another one is trained Neil model index so here this added now this added and we are having that model name dot index now so this is the index file that we want to use for our uh, model tra our model so we can just download this one so download the scanning for virus <laughs> and it is asking where to save i'm just going to create like i'm just storing it outside okay it, it just downloaded it's around 92 mb then we need to download that model file also now i download index file then i need to download model file so for that go in go to that project main folder and there is something called asset asset folder so inside the assets there is there is another folder called weights okay here we have all our train models and since we gave the save frequency as 50 so it stored 50 100 150 200 250 epochs model so the, and also these things will happen dynamically which means while the whole training process is going on and once the training is done for first 50 epochs so it will store the 50th epoch model and once it is done for 100 epochs then it will store the 100 epochs model so that even while the training process is going on we can just download the train model and check how our result is for each model anyway since here the whole training process is already complete which means that the whole 250 uh, epoch is already complete so i'm just going to take the final model which is the 250 epoch model i am just storing in that file okay 
So now we have both model file and index file. So let's clone my voice into Neil Tyson voice using the model that we have trained. So for that, first we need to copy this uh, index file and go to RVC beta folder. And here go inside log folder and paste it here. Just same as we did in last video. And go and take Neil like model form file and go to RVC beta folder inside weights folder. Paste it here. If you don't know from where I am just getting this RVC beta folder, then go and watch the previous video. I just gave the link in the description that we just download this RVC beta and we just unzip it and make this folder. Okay, now we just placed both files in a proper location. Now we need to find go web.bat and just press enter and run it. It will take maybe 30 seconds to load. Okay, so now here if I just see this drop down menu, I can see the model file here and here I can see the index file. Okay, now I need to give the uh, audio that I am going to convert. I already created a text, um, a text file that is over here. Just if I run, you can hear so my. This is a test file that we are running for 250 epochs model. So let's see how our uh, model trains. Okay, so this is my voice. I'm just going to clone this voice to Neil Tyson voice. So I'm just copying this path and paste it over here. Okay, so now we need to set this parameter. If you don't know how to set this parameter, then watch my last video. I already explained like each and every parameter and how to set. So I'm just doing it. Like little fuss. Yes. Okay. Let's convert my voice. Since it is like a small file, it's not a song or something, right? Since it is a small file that we are converting, it is just a 10 second audio. So it will take, it will, the conversion will take very fast. Maybe in 15 seconds or something, it will get converted. So let's see. Yeah, it get converted. Okay, this is a test file that we are running for 250 box model. So let's see how our uh, model trains. Yeah, see now you can see a great difference here. See, this is my voice. This is my voice. Okay, this is a test file that we are running. And this is Neil Tyson's voice. Okay, this is a test file that we are running for 250 box model. See, even though we just trained our model only for 250 epochs, but it is like resembling around 70 to 80 percent of Neil Tyson voice. So, if you increase the epochs to around 500 or around 1000, then it will give a very accurate result. Even with this, we are getting this much result. So, if you are increasing your uh, number of epochs, then it will, get, it will get an accurate result. Okay, this is the way that we can clone anyone voice using this RVC model. But here in this video that we saw that how to train a model using an online platform that is Google Colab. But using this Google Colab have some problem like that it has some drawback. One is it need a stable internet connection. If you don't have an internet connection, then you cannot train a model using Google Colab. And also you need a stable internet connection, which means in between if your internet goes off and come back, then the training process will stop. Then you need to start from the beginning. So that is why I already suggest you to use save frequency to save the model, keep on saving the model. Otherwise, if in between, if it got disconnected, then all the training process will get spoiled. So this is the first drawback that we need a stable internet connection. The second problem is uh, it will ask to verify like we just here train only 250 epochs model which took around uh, one and a half hours so there is no problem but if you are just training for thousand epochs then it will take around seven to eight hours and google collab like if you are using in google collab if you are running something in google collab for more than two hours then in between it will ask you to verify that you are a human or not so we don't know that when it will ask so you need to be like always focused and when it will ask because if you didn't verify that in one or two minutes then it will disconnect your connection which means that uh, it will disconnect the training process so all your training process will get uh, wasted again so this is the second problem that it will ask you to verify in between and we don't know we really when it will last so we need to be always focused that when it will last the third thing is if you are training many models continuously without any gap then 
uh, Google Colab will find there is an unusual traffic in uh, usage of their virtual RAM because they are giving free RAM not for this purpose actually the Google Colab they are giving free RAM for education purpose we can use Google Colab for uh, study purpose or some research purpose so if they found that there is an unusual traffic unusual usage of their uh, uh, Google Colab virtual RAM then they will ban your account for maybe four hours then if you keep on doing the same thing then the ban time will be keep on increasing like four hours eight hours then 12 hours like that it will increase for days and months also so wh what i suggest is like if you want to continuously actually first thing is don't train uh, many models continuously just train one model and give some gap and train another model but if you want to train many models continuously then create four or five google account uh, google collab account then just use one account to train one model then use another account to train another model like that if you do then there is no problem at all but anyway still there are there are two problems one is connectivity problem and another one is verify problem but if you are just training a model using using your system then you no need no need to have any internet connection and you no need to verify you are human or not you can just train your model without any problem but the only problem that we are facing in training a model in our own laptop our own system is we need a gpu power because without gpu we can't train at least we need a minimum level of gpu to train even with the minimum level of gpu actually in our in my laptop i have 4 gb gpu even this 4 gb gpu is taking around uh, 4 hours to train this 250 epochs but google collab is always faster because they are giving around 16 gb virtual ram for gpu so google collab will be faster if, so if you have a system which contain gpu then you can train your own model in your own system itself so in the next coming video we will see that how we can train our own model using our own system and also we missed one thing in this video that actually we gave that auth token for tensor board something called tensor board to visualize our training process right so that also is a little big concept so in the coming video we will see that how we can use tensor board to visualize our training process so that we can decide like how many epochs we need to run to get an uh, accurate result so stay tuned for the next video just by subscribing to the channel so that you will not miss the next video